So now to Ukraine. So Ukraine has reportedly bombed its own prisoners in order to blame Russia. We've seen this before. And the reason I'm saying this is because even the United States uh, Department is not, Kiev is claiming, for example, that the Russians did it. Now, these the, these prisons, these prisoners were located in Donetsk. They were not located in um, in a pro U Ukrainian spot. They were located in in a Russian controlled area, right? And Ukraine has been bombing this area. So everybody's like, wait a minute, why would Russians bomb their own area, even if? They're prisoners. They already have them as prisoners. And what the Russians have been doing with the prisoners is they've been questioning them. They've been saying, okay, tell us what happened, tell us how it, the conditions have been, and blah, blah, blah. These prisoners, a lot of them were from the Azov Battalion. And the issue the, the SBU has been having, and, and the Ukrainian military in general, is they don't like it that a lot of these prisoners are deserting or they're starting to talk about the truth of how they were being treated. And so Russia claimed right away, we didn't do this. They used this high Mars weapon, this American made weapon. Why would we have that weapon? We destroy these weapons. We don't, you know, we don't, <laughs> we don't use them, especially on Donetsk that's been getting shelled all the time by Ukraine. So this doesn't make any sense. So both sides were blaming each other, right? That's just like laying it out for you guys. So this is what happened specifically. This is from Prensa Latina. Ukraine's bombing of prison in Donetsk kills 53 inmates. So this happened on July 29th, just a few days ago. The military command of the Donetsk People's Republic reported the death of 53 people and 75 wounded as a result of the bombardment of prison in Elenovka that was carried out by these Ukrainian forces. The DPR confirmed it through Telegram that it took place in the early hours of Friday, uh, Ukraine Moscow time, and that these prisoners had been in that prison. And reps of Donetsk had said, um, and the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense had said that it was used with from an M142 HIMAR system, a US made multiple rocket launcher. And that's what hit Elenovka. And I'm gonna show you guys the damage it did because uh, Eva Bartlett has done amazing reporter reporting from there. Um, so the leader of the DPR, Dennis Pushlin, stated that there were 193 prisoners in that prison and many of them were former members of the Azov Battalion. And he said specifically, Kiev is deliberately eliminating those Ukrainian fighters who have surrendered in order to cover up war crimes perpetrated against civilians in Donbass and thus force others to continue fighting instead of surrendering. Because as I said, a lot of these, pris a lot of these uh, prisoners and um, militants for Ukraine are leaving. They're literally, uh, what's their specific word? Deserting. They're deserting the, the army and they're also talking to Russia, Russian military about the things they were made to do. And there's countless videos of on the ground journalists really getting these testimonies out of them. And they're talking about, you know, what what they did and what they what they had done. And so they didn't want the, the Ukrainians don't want these prisoners to talk anymore. So Dennis Pushlin is saying that that's why they were eliminated and they don't want to be exposed for the, the crimes in the Donetsk, which have been continuing for the last eight years against the civilians there. So anything you want to say so far? No, I was just going to say another term is AWOL, which is absent without leave. They go AWOL. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's another, they're, they're gone. I mean, there's just a lot of things that they said they were made to do. I like killing civilians and and you know all of these things that some I'm sure the taking to the polls fam that a lot of that shit probably yeah I mean I mean the, there are I mean obviously members of the Azov battalion who were are obviously you know that's a whole other level of stuff but I mean they just don't want that exposed to the public because it tarnishes its image that Ukraine the Ukrainian military that the West has put out is so innocent and that they haven't done uh, any damage and the, the poor Ukrainians, especially with Zelensky's Vogue photo shoot and every, and you know, and the money that is coming from the West. 
So now what happened is that Russia invited the UN and the Red Cross to investigate this bombing, okay? And they said it in the interest of conducting, and this is slide 10, an objective investigation on the strike of the strike on the detention center in Yelenovka, which led to the deaths of many Ukrainian prisoners of war, the Russian Federation has officially invited experts from the UN and the International Red Cross. This is the, what the ministry said. And they also said all political, criminal, and moral responsibility for the bloodbath against Ukrainians is borne personally by Zelensky, his criminal regime, and Washington, which supports him. Um, the military of Ukraine also released a statement Friday accusing Russian troops of, of shelling the town. So again, Ukraine is accusing Russia of doing it. And they said that Moscow destroyed the prisoner in order to put the blame on Kiev, as well as to, quote, hide the torture of prisoners and executions. So that's what Ukraine, Kiev was saying. Um, but Let's uh, send them again, more money, fam. Right. And um, so, again, the DPR has, says that, no, it was Ukraine who targeted the facility, that uh, specifically, Dennis went into further detail, saying that the Azov members had been providing testimonies about possible war crimes by their commanders, and that the Kiev authorities knew exactly where the Azov prisoners were being held. And that is what DPR militia spokesman Edward Basurin told reporters. And um, Washington didn't rush <sighs> to blame Russia. They said, we just don't have enough information to speak intelligently about these very early reports. And that was said by John Kirby, spokesperson uh, for the UN Security Council. Uh, so they're kind of like walking around eggshells here, right? Yeah. So that's all the communication aspect of what was said from both sides. Um, yeah. Can I translate real quick what John Kirby said? Guys, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we've looked like an idiot this whole freaking time trying to say <laughs> one thing and get our own rhetoric out there. Yeah. But I'm just going to take a pass on this one so you can't make fun of us for today. Thank you. Yeah. Their story is falling apart. Their narrative is falling apart. And this doesn't help. And so you're absolutely right. That was a good translation because that's exactly what they mean. Uh, they're they're kind of walking back on a lot of stuff now. And so now we go to the underground reporting, which is essential to really get what's happening here. So Eva's been going to the Donbass every so often, and she went this past weekend, and she was there this week, this past week. Um, and she took some pictures and, and took some videos, which she's editing. And check out her Telegram, which is amazing, because she puts a lot of stuff there, because you can put longer videos on Telegram. And she said, warning, graphic photos, horrific scenes today at the detention center near the village of Yelenovka, which Ukraine bombed late last night with American HIMARS. Press secretary of the DPR military command, Edward Basurin said 53 Ukrainian POWs dead, 71 injured. So she got criticized for saying they full out did it. The reason, and then she said, well, she could have added reportedly, but I mean, um, according to what they saw and according to a lot of people that have been reporting on this, the evidence is clear based on the weapon used. And so warning, these pictures are graphic. I'm warning you guys again, because I'm going to show the pictures. These are people that are dead, the charred bodies. So that's a picture right there. Uh, and you can just go through some of the the pictures that are there. The next one is um, just people laid out on the ground and it's blurred out, uh, thankfully. And then the, the third one is uh, very graphic, uh, just charred bodies because they were, again, they were bombed. They were in this prison and then they were just completely incinerated, right? And then the last one as well, you can see the effect of this, of the US weapons, these weapons that are billions of dollars and Europe's billions of dollars pays, mainly ours, because we keep sending and pasta just mentioned, right? They just said that they meant how much more money? 550 million, making a total of 8 billion. We put the little video at the very end of the section of yeah. Mr. Kirby bragging about it. Um, And so she continued, right? This is her 
tweet from the second thread, the stench of death was everywhere. It's almost certain that Ukraine did this intentionally to its own soldiers who had surrendered, as Basarin pointed out, were confessing their murdering of Donbass civilians. These are confessions that are crimes of war, crimes of, against humanity that could be tried. And they don't want that to come out because it ruins this image that they had, right? And um, this, these orders reportedly came from the commanders, which came from Kiev. So that means that it came from Zelensky or from Zelensky's goons who own him, which is basically the West, right? Because Zelensky isn't in charge here. He's like, as, as Mark Sloboda has said numerous times, he's a prisoner in his own country because he's, he's just, do, he's an actor. He's being told what to do by all these people. So you guys can see here, just more pictures that she posted um, of the damage that, that was there. And, um, yeah, it, it was really bad. And, you know, it's crazy that she was there right as this was happening. And um, this is why this work is invaluable, because like I said, it's 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 one thing to be reporting on it and it's another thing to see it. Um, and so this right here is where I think she really wanted to highlight and what I think we should all highlight. These there are these little minds, right? And one of the things that has been injuring a lot of people in the Donbass is these little mines called petal or butterfly mines. Now, these mines are very nefarious because they're hard to see. And they've been dropped by Ukraine on Donetsk, and they're very, very, very easy to miss. And she said Ukraine is committing war crimes against civilians of the Donbass and has been for eight years. When people say this is Putin's war, Putin invaded Ukraine. He's killing all these people. They don't ever talk about this. They don't talk about how, for how long this region has been getting bombed, right? Um, and so there's some pictures of them. They don't even, they could look like leaves um, from far away, right? And you can see they're marked here, but she was saying even if they're not marked or even if they are marked, you could accidentally step on it and be blown, have a limb blown off. I mean, or, you know, completely. And um, it's yeah so this is i mean this is dangerous work that these people are doing i know she was with um several rt people i i well i think just one and maybe a couple crew um roman kozarev has been on the the ground as well so props to uh roman and you guys can see the the the, the thing there okay so just going now to uh, that, just so you guys see all of the, the stuff laid out, all of the evidence, right? Because it's hard to say for a single fact, you only have so much evidence that you can say, okay, based on this evidence, I conclude this. And we have seen numerous times, of course, Ukraine say, oh, it's the Russians did it. This is, I mean, this happens all the time, so. Yeah, so that was that. Uh, and I also wanted to show part of Putin's speech because there was the um, Navy parade in St. Petersburg. He was just there and uh, he gave a speech. And in a few seconds of that speech, I thought it was really important for the West to hear. President of the Russian Federation, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Russian hours. Federation, Vladimir Putin. The man who founded military traditions behind Russia's national interests openly are of vital strategic interests. Primarily, these are our, our Arctic, the Black Sea, the Baltic Strait, Kuril Straits, Sea of Hotsk. We will defend our interests in those territories with any means. We need to rely on our capabilities and anyone who'd like to endanger our sovereignty will get a strong response. We have a strong footprint. We have our naval, surface, submarine, coastal guard systems. So anyone that interferes with our sovereignty will receive a very strong response. The, what You've been pointing this out, Pasto. The main thing a lot of 
these countries that have been affected by Western imperialism or interventionism want is literally to have sovereignty over their own country, to decide what the hell they want to do, how they want to govern, and that's it. And again, here is is Putin, right? The 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 president, uh, the commander of of Russia's army and and the forces, saying we want to to have our sovereignty and not we want to have these resources we want to go out and do this we want to have our sovereignty and that's one of the things that i respect from any country and from any leader um and that the west has of course continuously disrespected and disregarded for yeah. decades and and a lot of people try to make parallels just saying that you know it's like well, they had their national sovereignty until they oppressed their people. And that's what the United States had to go in and spread a little bit of that democracy, mm -hmm. fam, getting some democracy on the plate. But that's that's the sad part, too, as well, is that a lot of these politicians and a lot of people in the government have duped the people in America to make making to manufacturing consent for America's imperialism. The, to right. say they have a right. And they also use the power vacuum thing that once we pull out Putin... And uh, Xi Jinping are going to take over all these spots. But yet, you know, when they're in, their, when they're in these friendly countries where they have deals and it's obvious that these, these other countries are doing business with China, you don't see China uh, expanding out and building military bases. Watching that Senate hearing for the Council for Foreign Relations the other day, uh, when it comes to the global south, I don't know about this family. You got guys like DeSantis on deck licking at the chops waiting to get in there it, it, it doesn't seem like uh you know we have any more friendly people within our governments uh actually allowing that natural sovereignty to take place you got people like rubio and cruz who are pushing for more intervention right off the bat you know and a lot of people in america a lot of conservatives are fooled to thinking that it's okay because they are thinking that it's a communist authoritarian regime that's ruling over these countries and that that's what the problem is. It's about the system. We got to get rid of that system over there, fam. Uh, because if we don't, then they'll one day end up on our doorstep. Yeah. I mean, they do think that they do think that. I mean, and unfortunately it's the opposite way around the fact that we are there. That's why the citizens are ending up on our doorstep because we're, we're, we're turning into them into what did Donald Trump called them shithole countries. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with the 80 bases in the in Latin America and down in that global south. And the fact that anytime they have a, a leader who wants to push for their national sovereignty and uh, nationalize their own resources, you know, that then they got to go. If they're going to nationalize their own resources, whoa, 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 whoa. No way they got to go. We want those resources for our corporations. So we want that country unstable so we can extract we those resources. It. Yeah. We say it and out They blatantly loud. say it. Yeah, that they're like, "Oh, well, the Amazon has some of the most amazing." Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's it's quite frightening. Yeah. Um. So this this dude, right, right here, what's his name? This is John Kirby. This is a John Kirby. Here. Yes, State Department. Yes. Uh, this will be the 17th now time that the Biden administration has authorized a security assistance package using presidential drawdown authority since President Biden took office. And it brings to more than $8 billion drawdown authority uh, alone uh, in material and security assistance for Ukraine just since the in uh, invasion began in late February. I don't have to say anything. I'm a doctor, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a John C. Riley meme at the very end. I don't know anything. I'm a doctor too. Just <laughs> trying to really amp it up. Fam, I, I, I just got to point out, I mean, not not only the fact that they're just rubbing it in your face about $8 billion, which, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't have to tell you what we can do with $8 billion back here in the United States for our own citizens. I, I don't have to tell you what how we can fix homelessness and mental health and so many things that we can put money into with all that transportation money so many things right a nice but, train system would be nice i mean hello yeah um the next section we're going to be going into is but kind of very similar to what also mr kirby was saying there how do they label this it's drawdown 
They said, he said it twice, this drawdown presidential act. We're going to give them weapons as a way of drawing down, you know, uh, the war, that this is to for them to protect themselves for defensive measures and stuff like that. They actually labeled this money going out, the $8 billion, as drawdown. They're not drawing anything down. They're amping up, ladies and gentlemen. It's gross. It is gross. $8 billion, fam, since we started, and they're bragging about it. Eight billion. I mean, yeah. guys, I don't know how to say it, but there's got to be, there should be mass protests in the streets against this. It doesn't mean you hate Ukraine. I mean, I think some of these morons on the left, and I say on the left because a lot of them have their little Ukrainian flag. They're like, oh, you support Russian imperialism. And it's like, <laughs> and I can't have an opinion because, you know, RT. So it's just like, but it, but it's it's not you know it's not about Ukraine even or Russia. It's about the fact that this money and this death and this destruction is being done in your name, whether or not you agree with it. We have no say in this. Yeah. Why is everybody okay with that? Why? I mean, the American Revolution started because there was unfairness in taxes and that that started of course not just in north america but in latin america as well they weren't the interests of the people even the the wealthier landowning people of south america were not being represented by the crown by the monarchy so they were like well if we're not being represented then why the hell are we being taxed why the hell are we being you know you are representations being used for this our money that it's not being used properly what happened to that especially to all the patriots and stuff you know all the all the people on the right who really love the constitution where is that sentiment why are you supporting this i don't get uh, it it's it's funny before we get to the next section fam too as well you talked about the amazon not too long ago right so leonardo dicaprio and this is a story i want to bring wednesday uh, but Leonardo DiCaprio has been out there talking about the Amazon is being, you know, drained and destroyed and blah, blah, blah. And Bolsonaro responded to him on his Twitter, say, hey, man, you on your mega yacht, which burns how much diesel per hour that you're right there? You want to sit there and wag your finger and lecture the earth? How about you get rid of that super yacht first, too, as well? So uh, kind of cute little thing going on between Bolsonaro and Leonardo DiCap DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah, they're both hypocrites, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, Taylor Swift, I think, is the num the celebrity that spends the most on uh, flying her private jets, and she has several, really? by the way. And it's, the, everybody's like, oh, she she's really good on environment, the environment. She's always talking about the environment. I I mean, no, the pores have to start driving less. The pores have to recycle more. The pores have to make sure not to use plastic. The yeah. pores have to do that. I mean, I mean, it's not, and you know, it's not that I don't believe that the climate is changing. It's that I know that they are weaponizing the entire thing. And that's the next thing, by the way. You know, the current thing, it's it's climate change. That's the next thing. We we yeah. went through the things. That's the next thing. The the weaponization of that. They're gonna say we need everybody to to stay in to do this X Y Z because of the 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 climate crisis and these progressives. As we're gonna talk about these progressive bills, they fall hook line and sinker for all this manipulation. Yeah. Well, um, if Hollywood was really really concerned and all the star celebrities were really concerned, they'd be going after every single congressman and. Remember, not just yeah. playing the whole game that the Democrats are trying to fight for you against these evil Republicans. It's so it's such a fucking ridiculous act. And I don't I don't know who's getting fooled by it anymore.